Today's scripture lesson comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 13 through 20. That again is the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 13 through 20. And it reads, Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But who do you say that I am? Simon, answered, Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on his rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Hades will not prevail against it, excuse me. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosened in heaven. Then he sternly ordained his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Word of God for the people of God. So today's scripture lesson for our sermon comes from the book of John, chapter 18, verses 33 through 37. That again is the book of John, chapter 18, verses 33 through 37. And it says, Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus and asked him, are you the king of Jews? Is that your own idea, Jesus said, or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew? Pilate replied, your own people and chief priests handle you over to me. Was it, what is it you have done? Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, Pilate said. Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. So today I want to talk to you all about finding your purpose or finding what I call your spiritual identity. But before we get into that, I want to just tell this, this story right quick. And this story is not true. It's a fictional story. It's something that, again, never happened in life. But I think it will help bring us into where we need to be for this message. There was this young man and we'll just call him Dave, you know, let's just use that name. Now, Dave was a young guy walking home from school. And let's just say Dave was in high school and he was walking home on this certain day. Now, for the last three years, Dave took the same route home, same route for three years. He would pass other schools, grocery stores, and many other businesses. Now, for the past two weeks, Dave has been hearing about this new place in town. And we all know how it is when something new comes into town, you know, whether it be a grocery store, movie theater, a restaurant, some type of whatever it may be, shopping center, whatever it is, it's new, it comes to town, and everyone wants to try it, you know. So on this particular day, Dave decided, you know, I'm just going to stop up here at this place and see what it's about. So on his way home, he, he takes a small detour and goes by this new spot that's in town. Now, this place doesn't have a name and no one really knows what it's about, but everyone's talking about it. So Dave walks up to the door of this place and there is a security guard posted outside the door. Now, when I say post, I mean standing. He's standing on his post, standing outside the door. 
and he stopped Dave on his way in. Now, usually a security guard will stop and check you, you know what I'm saying? Or, or check you for ID or some type of weapon. But this security guard stopped Dave and asked him to identify himself. So Dave told him who he was. He said, my name is David. You know, I live here and this is my, you know, this is my identity. So the security guard said, that's not good enough. So Dave, being like any other regular citizen, he decided to pull out his wallet and ID. And he showed it to the security guard and he said, OK, well, here you go. Here's my wallet. Here's my ID or here's my ID. And the security guard said, that's not enough. Who are you? And David replied, my name is David. It says it right here on this card. The guard replied, that's not answering my question. Who are you? Who are you truly? At this point, you know, David was very confused. He, he was just, he was very perplexed. He didn't know what to say. He showed this man his ID. He told him who he was. He has his address, everything. And this guy is asking, still asking, who are you? So then he, the, the guy asked David, or David asked the guy, the security guard, what do you want from me? I've shown you everything I need to show you. What do you want? And the security guard replied, this place here is for people with dreams, people with, ask for, with aspirations. People want to better themselves in life and be the best they can be. People who know who they truly are on the inside. On the inside. So Dave took a minute and he thought about it. And he thought deep and hard about it. And then he responded. I am smart, I am brave, and I am able. So again, today I want to talk to you about looking inside yourself and finding your spiritual identity, or as other people may say, your purpose. So if you look up the definition of the term identity, it comes back as the fact or being who or what a person or thing is. The way that's worded is very weird, but that's definitely what the Internet says. <laughs> so today we have many ways in today's society, we have many ways to identify ourselves. We have ID cards, fingerprints, birth certificates, along with many other ways. Now, I don't know about you, but when I hear the term identity, the first thing I think of is a social security number. That's the most port important way to physically identify someone. Now, notice I said physically identify someone because a social security number can only do can do many things. And I mean many things. But what it cannot do is identify you spiritually. You see. I have a driver's license. You may have a driver's license or some type of state ID. And this card consists of my picture, name, date of birth, address, which is still a Georgia address, so I need to change that over. So that's not really right right now. Height and eye color. All of these things are just what people would consider my physical identity. This card does not consist of my dreams, my abilities, my legacy, my purpose. In other words, my spiritual identification. If we look at the text, we can see Jesus is currently on trial being questioned by, Pont by Pontius Pilate. And we all know how some trials work. It's hours and hours of multiple questions and answers. But trials, you know, then are not as organized as they are today. You see, today, just to give you all some context, today we have trials in a quiet in mostly controlled courtroom. You see in these courtrooms, you have a judge, you have security, you have order. But this trial and trials such as this one around this time were very hectic, loud and chaotic. And, and there were many distractions from the many 
hundreds, if not hundreds of people that were crowded around them. Again, just to give you all context. Now, Pilate asked Jesus, are you the king of Jews? And Jesus gives what many may consider a smart answer. You know, he didn't answer the question correctly. He, re he responded in a different way. You see, he never gave Pilate a straight answer to his question. He answered the question with the question. You know, like someone walks up to you, let's say someone walks up to you or someone walks up to the church and, and they asked you, they asked you, is this Dalton City or Long Creek UMC? And then you, instead of saying yes or no, you respond and say, is this what someone told you or is this what you think of the church? That's not much of an answer they're looking for, correct? You know, that's not the answer that you would be looking for or someone else be looking for. But that's the answer. That's the type of answer Jesus gave Pilate. He then uses the term my kingdom, which Pilate takes as confirmation of Jesus admitting he is the king. But it's his last response that really sticks out. And it says, in fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify the truth. Everyone on this side of truth listens to me. In this moment, Jesus never actually admitted to being the king, but he still presented his identity. He could have easily said that I am a king, but what good does that really do? You see, king was just a name, just a title, but his true identity was to testify the truth. Now, as we look around the world today, we see a lack of spiritual identification, a lack of people who know that they truly possess inside of themselves. We have become servants of material objects, zombies of social media, greedy for wealth and fame, addicted to turning an eye on our fellow brother and sister. We have become first cousins to violence and hatred and distant step, step cousins to peace and love. Why are younger children dying? Because a loss of identity. Why is the church shrinking? Because a loss of identity. Why are some people struggling to maintain life while others have more money than they can use in a lifetime? Because a loss of identity. We are more concerned about what the world can offer us and not what we can offer the world. It's just like joining an organization or working a job. Yes, it has its benefits and it pays you, but these organizations only survive if we continue to bring something to them. Look at the United Methodist Church, for example. Now, decades ago, Methodism started off as a simple idea in a man's head. A man named John Wesley. He said, this is how we should see God and live our lives and run a denomination. And over time and time and time, more people came to the church and more people brought ideas to better the church. And now look at what we have today, a global denomination, all because many individuals decided to look inside themselves, find their purpose in life and their spiritual identity and bring something to the church. You see, it's time for a shift. It's time for something new. It's time for a new breeze to come in and blow out the past that has been keeping us on cruise control. We have to get back to looking inside ourselves, finding our true potential. In this very sanctuary on this morning, we have many successful people in many different career areas. To the outside world, it may look like it was your physical ability that got to where you are, and yes, your physical ability got you up, but it was your spirit, spirit that pushed you through the day. It was your spirit that got that job. Yes, you did the interview, but it was your spirit that was doing the speaking. Yes, you did your best at all times, but it was your spirit that made sure you did your best at all times. You see, looking inside yourself and finding your potential, your purpose, your spiritual identity it can cause you to make a change for yourself. It can cause you to help others. It can allow you to do whatever you put your mind to in life. 
But I don't want to stop at just your job because life is more than just a job. Life is more than just your career. There are many other things in life that God wants you to do. God has placed us all here on this earth for a reason, to fulfill a purpose. What is your purpose? What is your spiritual identity? Something I've heard from multiple colleagues ever since I've been pastoring for a month or some change is that the word retirement is 100 percent absolutely positively positively scientifically proven for sure that is not found in the bible the word retirement is not found in the bible that means that even when you retire or leave your job you still have a purpose on this earth church no matter your age your class your background Everyone has a purpose in life. What's your purpose? What is your spiritual identity? So if you want to know how to find these things, I want to give you three things that we should be doing. Three things that we should try to do to find our purpose in life. First and foremost, identify the things that you care about. Secondly, recognize your strengths and your talents. And last but not least, pray and act. So the first one is identifying the things that you care about in life. So what do you care about? What is something that you think about often that you find joy in? Do you like gardening? Do you like working with kids? Do you like serving people? Do you like planning and organizing? Do you like reading the Bible and learning about God? You see, God gives us feelings and emotions so we are able to connect what we care about in life. We have to use those feelings to connect with what we love. The love that may be a calling for you. You see what I said there? The love that may be a calling for you. Maybe God wants you to start a community garden. Maybe God wants you to volunteer at a school. Maybe God is calling you to learn more about him. Sometimes these feelings do certain things that are on that. Sometimes these feelings to do certain things that are on our hearts. They are on our hearts because God knows that we are worthy and prepared to handle them. Explore your entrance, your potential participation in it just may change someone's life. The second thing is to recognize your strengths and talent. So the first one, you, you, you find what you're interested in. Now you're looking at what you are already good at. What, do you, what is something in your life that someone has always said you're good at? Are you a good people person? Are you a good speaker? Are you a good organizer? Are you a good teacher? Are you a good leader? Whatever it may be. What are you good at? You see, God, I look at it this way. Think of it like a car with four-wheel drive or a truck with four-wheel drive. Because it's equipped with something, that means it was meant to do it. If it's equipped with four-wheel drive, that means it was meant to go off-road. Sometimes God equips us with certain talents and, and things that work in our favor because he wants us to achieve certain goals. If God equips you with good teaching skills or good leadership skills, maybe God wants you to lead something. Maybe God wants you to teach something. If God equips you with good people, or what we call people skills, people person skills, maybe God wants you to, to reach out to people, to spread his word, just to be in community with people. We are equipped with certain things because we are made to use those things. So what is something that you're good at? Take some time and think about that. And last but not least, to pray and act. 
Now, if you've done the first two things, maybe you've come to a conclusion about something you could do, about what your purpose in life is, what your true spiritual identity is, what your strengths are. So pray on it and go for it. If you know it's something you want to do, go for it. If, it's no, if you know it's something you're good at, pray on it and go for it. God wants us to be happy. God wants us to serve him, but God wants us to serve others as well. And everything that we do on this earth is a form of serving someone. Everything positive we do on this earth, excuse me, is a form of serving someone. So pray on what you feel that you may be called to do in life outside of your job, whether it is a job or outside of your job and go for it. Because God just may be calling you to it. Church, as I leave you today, I want you all to know that each and every one of us, we all have a purpose in life. Some may not know what it is, but we all have one. We all serve a purpose. We all have a spiritual identity, something beyond just our name or our, our social security number or, or, or what we may you know, what our jobs we had or our houses we had, something deeper than that. We all have a purpose that is deeper than that. And that God wants us to achieve that purpose. So think about what you love in life. Think about what you are good at life. Think about the things that God has equipped you with in life and go for it. Amen.